Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. So yesterday, Julie and I made about 18 kilos of uh, Italian pork sausage. This is a recipe that we got from Julie's uncle, uh, Uncle Carmen. Um, his family is from Sicily. And so we made this with him once, I don't know, probably 25 years ago. Went out and got a grinder and we started making it ourselves at home every fall, early winter. Um, and you can see a video, I'll link to a video of Julie and I making the sausage down below. It was so long ago on the channel, I have brown hair. So we get down to the end of making the sausage and you get this lump of sausage and it's like, I really don't want to put another casing on. We'll portion this out and we'll freeze it without having it in casings for making a dish just like this. So tonight we're going to make a one pan sausage pasta for dinner. Okay, the pan looks hot, so we'll get some of that sausage in. I'll probably only use about half of what's in this container. Maybe about that much. And as it fries, I'll just break it up in the bottom of the pan. I used to, I used to um, turn it into little meatballs, and I'd fry the meatballs and then take them out while I was cooking the pasta. I don't do that anymore. Now I just, I break it up and I leave everything in the pan. I don't take anything out at any point. So the sausage is almost cooked. I've got a little bit of onion sliced up. I'm gonna put that in and fry it off just as I finish the sausage. At this point, you could add some seasoning depending on your sausage. Um, some hot pepper flakes would be great, but there's hot pepper flakes in our sausage. Our sausage is hot pepper flakes, fennel, black pepper, salt, a little bit of wine, a little bit of water just to lubricate it to get it into the casings easier. So if you're using a store-bought Italian sausage, taste the sausage when it's cooked and decide if you need to add a little bit more. And then just supplement it with the flavors that you think are going to go in there. A little bit of Italian seasoning, the hot peppers like I mentioned, salt and pepper if you think you need it. Um, pretty much anything that you think goes with the flavors of the sausage that you're using. I mean, realistically, this could be chorizo. And then you could take it in a completely different direction. So the sausage is cooked and I've got some really good brown fond on the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to deglaze that with a little bit of white wine. All right, we'll scrape up all that goodness, all that flavor on the bottom. Now, the next thing I've got between three and a half and four cups of chicken stock here. I'm gonna put in about three cups. And I'm gonna bring that up to a boil. The idea is, I know that between three and a half and four cups of liquid will cook through 300 grams of pasta. And we'll give enough sauce left over. And the starch from the pasta is gonna give like a nice creamy finish. So I only wanna put in so much liquid to start with. The fudge factor here is how much evaporates as you're boiling it, as you're cooking it. Um, so you need to put the pasta in as soon as the liquid starts to boil. You need to give it a stir, put the lid on, and then come back and check it over the course of five or six minutes. Maybe add a little bit more liquid. If you don't have more chicken stock, you could use water. You could use all water at this point because there should be enough flavor in your sausage. You could add a little bit more wine. If you don't have wine, you could use beer. It's pretty easy. Okay, our liquid has come up to a boil. In goes the pasta. I'm using bow ties, but you could use any shape you like. And I'm just gonna stir that in. Get the pasta down into the liquid as best I can. And stick on the lid. So it's been a couple of minutes. I know it's not cooked. I'm just gonna lift the lid. I'm gonna give it a stir. I'm gonna take a look at it. I'm gonna see that the liquid is fine. There's lots of liquid in there. Because of the way I'm cooking this, a lot of people have taken to calling this the risotto method. And realistically, the rest of my uh, chicken stock should be in a little pot, hot, so that when I pour it in, the boiling doesn't stop. You can just do it in a, in a jug like this, stick it in the microwave, make sure it's always warm. It'll be fine. Okay, we'll check it again. We'll give it a bit of a stir. I'm thinking that needs just a touch more chicken stock, not much. Another couple minutes. 
Okay, I'm gonna guess that the pasta is probably 90% cooked at this point. So, give it a little bit of a stir. Yeah, it's pretty good. And there's still enough liquid in the bottom here that I'm gonna be able to really emulsify and get a good sauce out of this. Now, this is the point where I like to add some frozen peas and some broccoli. Just stir that in. Turn down the heat. And put the lid back on for another minute and a half or two minutes. So at this point, the peas are cooked through and the broccoli is probably 60 to 75% cooked. Last couple of ingredients. I've got some heavy cream, about a half a cup of heavy cream. Totally not necessary. If you want to leave it out, go right ahead. I just kind of like what it brings to the whole thing. And then I'm going to grate in some pecorino. You could use uh, Parmesan if you want to. I really like pecorino. And then we just give that a really good stir. Get the cream and the cheese in there everywhere and turn that into a really nice sauce. So that's it, a super simple weeknight meal, all in one pot, um, beginning to end if you're, if you're quick with your mise en place, beginning to end half an hour. And really, the only thing I chopped was an onion, poured some peas out of the freezer, and, uh, and cut off some broccoli florets. Really simple. Hey, so, friends. Hey, Glenn. <laughs> hey, Jules. Um, I didn't want to interrupt you there. Let me get you a bowl. It smells good. I just thought I'd wander on in. There you go. As per my usual style. And sausage is a great starting place for this because it comes with, you know, packed with flavor. Um, but you could start out with ground meat, any ground meat, and then flavor that as you cook it. Mm-hmm. Mm. I always like the flavor of the sauce when you when you use the pasta the pasta water starch. Yeah. yeah. I mean it's it's oh. it's grown up hamburger helper. Really? I mean, you know. Yeah. Don't sugarcoat it. It's it's grown up hamburger helper. With less sugar, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that that uh, broccoli is really good. It's mm -hmm. still crunchy. I love it. So you know, use broccoli because Julie and I like broccoli. Could be kale or carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Or spinach, or Swiss char, or or something green like that. Or all I mean, those things. All of those things all at once, yeah. You don't have to limit the number of vegetables you add. No. Just saying. Mm. It's really good. Okay. In that case, um, I said we'd get some wine glasses. Yeah. Give it a shot. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.